What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. The MMA Reporter is a podcast by Ariel Hawani, hosted by Ariel Hawani. Started off as a roundtable discussion with uh, various MMA reporters, uh, the origins of which were the MMA beat uh, from the MMA uh, fighting.com, where Ariel used to work before getting picked up by ESPN, where now he does the MMA, uh, Ariel Hawani's MMA show, and now the uh, MMA reporters, which is similar to the MMA uh, after the beat. But now it was roundtable, but now it's more, it's very similarly structured to uh, MMA, his MMA show, Ariel Hawani's MMA show, where he gets one guest on at a time. Uh, but these, it's still reporters. Uh, it's a lot of this, the familiar faces that we've seen from Ariel Hawani's other shows, Mark Ramundi, uh, New York Rick. Red Akimoto from ESPN, uh, plus, you know, the man in the shirt, uh, which names escaping me. But, um, you know, so there's definitely people that are familiar as far as being MMA reporters and knowing their stuff. And it's interesting. It's one of the MMA podcasts I find uh, very interesting. I still watch uh, the beat after the beat, making the beat, MMA beat. Uh, which is very similar, except for that's the the standard or the old roundtable uh, discussion. Uh, but it's just interesting to listen to the people that cover the sport for a living, discuss some of the topics and things that are going on in MMA, in UFC, in other organizations. What's going on with Conor McGregor? What? Why? Why do they think you know uh, Cowboy Cerrone is taking fights, even though? that he wants to get the belt but taking fights with people that don't have the belt or aren't money fights necessarily. Uh, but it's just interesting perspectives from educated people on the topic. Uh, in addition to you know your standard ex-fighter that has a podcast with a comedian, um, which there's a lot of those shows out there where you get kind of the fighter's perspective and your everyday average person, which I think... As far as that kind of combination, uh, I've talked about it before on this show. Believe You Me with Michael Bisping and Luis J. Gomez, I think, is the best version of the comedian fighter uh, team up for a podcast. Um, but this one gives you a different, and I don't agree necessarily with a lot, like MMA media in general tends to like really focus and be some somewhat bias like if there's fighters that are just nice people and get along with and they come on the show and it's easy for them to interview like uh daniel cormier for instance he does he's like he's very like he's very much the media darling and when he was rumored to be uh you know trying to get a fight with brock lesnar they did the whole wwe bullshit in the the cage after uh, he beat like Derek Lewis or something like that. Like you want to talk about somebody who's like the weakest version of the quote unquote ch champ champ. Where it's like light heavyweight. He was only given the belt because John Jones uh, tested positive for this this thing. This like metabolite showed up in his thing or whatever. So again, D DC's like given the belt. Right. He didn't actually beat anybody for that belt. And then he goes to heavyweight and he beats Stipe, which is a legit fight that he legit won. But then he gets the follow-up fight with Derek Lewis that I love Derek Lewis, but the, he shouldn't have gotten a fight with a title fight off of his, those performances that he had just because he became a meme when he took his pants off during the post-fight interview. Like All that traction that he got on social media is the reason why they put together that heavyweight fight, which was ridiculous. Like... Him fighting Derek Lewis for the heavyweight belt is like him fighting Anderson Silva during UFC 200, where it's like Ander he didn't really do shit during that fight. Anderson Silva actually hurt, I think, hurt him more with a single kick to the liver, uh, but he didn't really, he should have been able to dominate Anderson Silva, and really wasn't able to do anything. He also cheated, he's, he's like the only fighter who that that's a quote unquote champion that didn't make championship weight like literally championship he used a towel to lean on in front of everybody he cheated and nobody brings that up nobody brings that up like he's had 
easy fights. He's had probably the best strategical matchups in his career. He's definitely overcome some heavy competition, but he's also had very good matchmaking in his favor. So I don't think they like consider him to be like the best of the best ever. It's like, okay, he's really good. He's really good. He's definitely in in like a conversation of best of the best, but it's like he's nowhere near the fighters in my opinion that like deservedly are put in the category of best of the best. However, it's topics like that I enjoy listening to Ariel Hawani have conversations with other MMA reporters about, even though I may not agree with the amount of passion that they have for certain fighters over other fighters. But I enjoy the perspective. And it's a very, I'm not saying, it's very like, they're not trying to do like blasphemous, like some of the comedian fighter podcasts will make bl- like crazy statements. Like uh, uh, Brennan Schaub loves to, just like loves to do like make clickbaity statements. Like that's all that's his thing. I just I can't listen to. And then Brian Callen is like mostly bullshit anyway. So it's very difficult to listen to any of that. But the MMA reporters. So it's like, as a fan of MMA, I like to know what's going on. It's interesting to see the matchups and what other people think because I don't really get to have conversations with people that know. Like, every once in a while, they'll, you know, I'll be driving a uh, ride share, and, and my passenger asks me if they, like, assume I'm into sports like football. It's like, I used to be watch all that shit, but now all I watch is UFC. Sometimes I'll get mildly intellectual conversations about the topic it's extremely rare though most people are like oh conor mcgregor it's like yeah okay yeah he's one fighter of like so many that are amazing like max holloway let's talk about him let's talk about max holloway let's talk about let's talk about khabib and how that's another guy khabib where it's like he's really not faced like the most difficult competition he's faced is conor mcgregor for sure like and then maybe Michael Johnson, but Michael Johnson's never been. I don't know how high he's gotten in the rankings, but he's definitely like top five. But he's not it like. But that would be, it's like he's had very favorable matchups. I think. I think there's a lot of people that could beat Khabib, and that's a guy that everybody's like. Another thing the media leans really hard on that he's like epic. <laughs> it's like he he fought Ally Quinton like two days notice to a decision. It's like he's not that epic. Anyway. Anyway, not that John Jones fighting like OSP or something like that was much better of a, a display of epicness. But uh, I love the MMA reporters. If you're an MMA fan if and you want to know like legitimate like reporting of what's going on and discussions of things, it's you can't go wrong with Ariel Hwani's MMA reporters uh, from ESPN. I love all of the love that Ariel's getting from ESPN. Like that's a guy's career that... I it's like it's inspiring to watch his trajectory and uh he's one of the best in the business. I it's like he's like the go-to for all MMA news for me. Uh so yeah, go check it out. Um so that's it for this episode of the Ray Taylor show. New episodes daily as I'm sure you know. Subscribe on IGTV and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at patreoncom slash Inspired Disorder. InspiredDisorder.com for all of my original artwork. Go buy some paintings now. At Ray Taylor for me on all social media. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out.